Avoiding Semantic Stovepipes, Five Ontological Principles for Interoperability by Lt. Col. Bill Mandrick. In the article Fixing Intel, Major General Flynn describes the proliferation of stovepiped information and digital junkyards. In what follows, I will describe how to avoid the creation of a stovepiped lexicon or controlled vocabulary. Any IT system that is built around an idiosyncratic lexicon, that is to say semantic stovepipe, will itself be a stovepiped solution. A lexicon or controlled vocabulary represents our understanding of some domain, so that a confused or conflated lexicon amounts to a lack of understanding. In contrast, a concise and accurate lexicon shows a deep understanding of some domain and acts as the foundation for problem-solving, planning, establishing situational awareness, and the integration of solutions. For the results of such efforts to be useful, they must be integrated into disparate organizations, which requires that they avoid the use of stovepiped terminology. So what is a stovepipe anyway? Stovepipes are defined as systems procured and developed to solve a specific problem characterized by limited focus and functionality, and containing data that cannot be easily shared with other systems. The creation of a stovepipe begins with stovepiped thinking, which then leads to highly idiosyncratic ways of defining entities and events that make up a domain. The, the five ontological principles for semantic interoperability are first to make explicit the three orders of reality, wherein entities and events make up first order reality, our perceptions of entities and events make up second order reality, and representations of entities and events make up third order reality. Second, think of any domain as part of a continuous, interrelated, and overlapping whole. Third, always distinguish between types and roles. Fourth, always use or create two-part genus-species definitions. And fifth, avoid conflation of dissimilar things. In what follows, I will describe each of these principles. First principle, make explicit the three orders of reality. First order reality is composed of the physical environment where entities occupy time and space and events unfold through time and space. This is also called the tactical level of war. Second order reality consists of the operators and analysts perceptions of first order reality. And third order reality is made up of the numerous representations of first order reality created to enhance situational awareness and the common operational picture. The data you see on this computer screen in the operations center is about the first order reality. Second principle, represent domains as part of a continuous, interrelated, and overlapping whole. A siloed or stovepiped perspective of this truck would result in an idiosyncratic description or definition. In other words, the same truck would most likely be defined differently, that is to say incompatibly between perspectives such as logistics, maneuver, counter IED operations, enemy situation reporting, intelligence, and targeting, just to name a few. This same truck could be defined as cargo, an enemy troop transporter, a weapons platform, or even a target. These incompatible ways of describing the same truck can be avoided with proper established practices. These incompatible perspectives are avoided by thinking of any individual domain as being part of a larger integrated and overlapping whole rather than as discrete and isolated silos. Third principle always distinguish between types and roles. So for example, a person is a type of animal. Hamid, pictured here, is an instance of a person 
who can be in various roles such as an elder, combatant, patient, or even a target, to name just a few. Likewise, a building is a type of facility which can be in various roles such as a house, hospital, a mosque, or even a target. And a truck is a type of motor vehicle which can be in various roles such as a weapons platform, troop transporter, an IED transporter, and again a target. This means that a truck, as well as a person, and a building can all be in a target role for some limited period of time. But note that saying that a person is a target, or a building is a target, or a truck is a target, is not an accurate way of describing reality, even though we commonly speak in this roundabout way. What is accurate to say is that a truck is a vehicle, which can be in a target role, or a building is a facility which can be in a target role, or a person is a mammal or an animal which can be in a target role. Imprecise or idiosyncratic descriptions will always lead to a stovepipe lexicon where, for example, a person would be defined as a target in one stovepipe while being defined as an influencer, a patient, an informant, or a combatant in other stovepipes. Fourth principle, always use or create two-part genus species definitions. Two-part genus species definitions derive from taxonomical trees that represent the categories of reality. This is done by, by way of the is-a or subtype relation where, for example, we say that a primate is a mammal or a metabolic process is a biological process. When creating definitions, we first refer to a thing's parent class or category in order to link it to an objectively verifiable taxonomy. Accurate taxonomies will promote the backbone, which will allow us to make relations between entities explicit. So, for example, a mortar round is a type of munition which has parts and can be in an IED component role. When creating a definition, always start by referring to the genus or parent class of the thing being defined. Then add the species or differentia, which are those attributes that distinguish the thing being defined from all other things in the parent class. Let's look at some examples. Here are some examples of parent classes for entities. So a truck is a type of motor vehicle. A personal name is a type of designation. A situation report is a type of description. And a map is a type of information bearing entity. Here are some examples of parent classes for events. So a computer network attack event is a type of cyberspace event. A council meeting is a type of political event. And an IED detonation is a type of hazardous event. Thinking back to our truck example, we start by referring to the parent class or genus. So a truck is a type of motor vehicle, which is intended for carrying or pulling loads which is a differentia from all other motor vehicles. Note that adding additional information to this definition, for example, its role as a weapons platform or an IED transporter, would make it idiosyncratic, thereby resulting in a stovepiped definition. Remain consistent when creating definitions. Notice that these example definitions have the same genus species format, making them accurate and concise, as well as being linked to a common reality. Fifth principle, avoid conflation when describing and defining entities or events. 
Conflation occurs when the identities of two or more entities or events become confused. The practice of treating two distinct things as if they were one results in confusion and misunderstanding. Common examples of conflation include, first, conflating information-bearing entities, such as planning documents, with the information contained within the plan, such as commander's intent, objectives, grid coordinates, or task specifications. Second, conflating designations for location with the actual geospatial location. And third, conflating an entity's genus, or its parent class, with a role that the entity could be in. Adherence to these ontological principles will result in the creation of domain lexicons or controlled vocabularies which are semantically consistent and interoperable with other domains, extending from, a commonly from commonly defined categories of reality will prevent developers from creating highly idiosyncratic domain lexicons, which are only helpful to one domain. The return on investment for creating consistent and interoperable domain semantics includes clear and concise definitions, consistent and interoperable domain semantics, definitions that are linked to an objectively verifiable taxonomy, enhanced understanding and reasoning across domains, and unity of effort across domains. This video was sponsored by the National Center for Ontological Research. See their website at the following link. Please send any questions or comments to the email listed here.